This podcast is brought to you by sarahraven.com, which is home to everything you need for a truly beautiful and productive garden. You'll also find great and essential gardening kit and stylish, lovely things to have in your house to bring the outside indoors, all inspired by the garden and the house being tied together. There's also plenty of garden inspiration, how-to videos and specialist growing guides. So head over to sarahraven.com today to discover even more. Welcome to Grow, Cook, Eat, Arrange, the podcast of me, Sarah Raven, and lots of my gardening friends and colleagues, and chefs, actually. Today I'm on my own because I wanted to give you the sort of crash course in what I'm sowing edible-wise at this time of year in the autumn. And we've been blessed with a really lovely, warm, and sort of Indian summery style September. So one can push out a little bit longer what one can sow and grow. And so I just thought I'd do a recap of the things that I'm going to be sowing and growing to eat right the way through the winter and until next April, this weekend. So I've gone through and chosen my absolute top 12. So going back to our top 12 series idea for sowing and growing right now. For the winter, you want to have something, of course, that's hardy. And so that sort of narrows it down quite a lot. And if you have any undercover space, whether it be a cold frame or a polytunnel or a greenhouse with perhaps a bed that you've had your tomatoes in or a big container in the greenhouse that you might have had tomatoes in, then these are things that I really passionately recommend that you do grow with a little bit of protection. But if you don't, almost all of these will survive the winter outside. So you'll get a good cropping through the autumn from these. And the sooner you get going with them, the better. And then they'll go into a bit of dormancy, but most of them shouldn't die. And then they'll come back into cropping as soon as we get a bit of warmth, perhaps in March. So it's still worth doing. But I definitely, in my experience, even in the south of England here in Sussex, I definitely recommend if you have undercover growing space, this is for what I would use it. And one of my sort of real passions in life is that I think uh, vegetable, edible crop growers, whether small scale or big, tend to be really good at concentrating on what you can get in your greenhouse, like tomatoes, cucumbers, chilies, aubergines in the summer and autumn months. But then as soon as the tomatoes have gone into making tomato, green tomato chutney or whatever it is, they tend to leave their greenhouse or their polytunnel or their cold frame empty until the spring. And that's just such a waste of a valuable growing space because all these things I'm going to go into really will give you the most delicious meals all the way through from about four, five, six weeks time, if you sow them now, and right the way through, as I've already mentioned, until March or April. And that's when they bolt or run up to flower and then seed and you have to stop cropping them and, and then sow in the spring to replace them. But yeah, wasted space is is one of the commonest things. And when I'm sort of driving around and I walk through allotments and stuff, I just find there's so often greenhouses are empty and I'm like, they don't need to be empty. All these things could be out there and you can pick just as much all the way through the winter months as you can through the summer and autumn. So the list of must-haves for me that I'm going to be sowing this weekend Start with lettuces. I've banged on quite a bit about the lettuce called Merveille de Quatre Saisons, but I have a bad French accent. Uh, the Marvel of Four Seasons. And it's one of those lettuces, as you can tell by its name, that you can sow and grow pretty much any month of the year. But September is perfect for sowing this. And I will sow this now, this weekend, into a gutter pipe, peat free compost into a gutter. I won't drill holes in the bottom of the gutter. I won't block the ends. I'll just uh, fill it with peat-free compost, water it, which holds it together and keeps the compost sort of in a unit, if you see what I mean. And then I will get the seed out into the palm of my hand 
and I will sow individual seeds of this, which you really can with most lettuce seeds, and I will sow them a good inch, so two to three centimetres apart, all the way down the middle of the gutter. That way, when they start to germinate in 10 days or so, it means I can grow them on for another 10 days or so, and then as soon as the tomatoes come out of the greenhouse, I can get my hand between seedling one and seedling two and push out seedling one. Move along six inches, push out seedling two. Move along six inches, that's moving the gutter along, push out seedling three. So if you see what I mean, you've got a gutter where everything is spaced at an inch or so apart, and you're then timesing that by six. And so you can get a really good row from even a metre long uh, length of guttering. And so I tend to use, I, I tend to have two metre lengths and I might have three varieties of lettuce sown in each sort of section, one, two, three. And that means I've got a really lovely selection of lettuce just in a, a, a two metre length of guttering that then turns out six times that surface area and each of the rows are six inches apart with a path every third or fourth line so I can get in to pick easily. So, you know, you really don't need perhaps more than, well, in, in our case, we've got a big greenhouse, but one, two or three gutter pipes. So the lettuce marvel of four seasons, uh, Merveille de Cat Saison is my absolute number one. It's a loose leaf variety, really tasty, really hardy, goes deeper red as the uh, weather gets colder, but is really just keeps cropping slowly all the way through. And to harvest it from about, as I say, six to eight weeks time, you just pick the outer leaves, leaving the heart intact. That's critical. You don't cut it off. You don't pull it up by its roots. You leave the roots in the ground and you just pick individual leaves, picking round the heart. The next, which is equally fantastic in my view, is another lettuce variety called Black Seeded Simpson. This comes from America. And if you leave it to grow on, it'll form an absolute stonking lettuce, 45 centimetres across. I mean, it's huge. Of the Cos family, so crunchy, but you're not growing it like that. So again, you're doing it exactly the same way as the Marvel and sowing them just an inch or, you know, two to three centimetres apart, transplanting them to six inches apart and picking round in exactly the same way. But that gives you, so you've got red leaves from the Marvel of Four Seasons. You've got bright green leaves from Black Seeded Simpson, which gives you crunch and you've got softness from the Marvel. So those are really good contrasting uh, lettuce varieties. If you want to add two more, add three and four, and I would go for Rouge d'Hiver, which is red of winter, which is another cos type, which in our trials last winter, we found just was fantastic for using, for picking round again, giving us those classic cos spear-shaped leaves in a dark crimson and really nice and crunchy, really hardy, as you can tell by its name. So that would be my number three. My number four would be another soft leaf type, which is an oak leaf cut and come again variety, which I would go for the green salad bowl, uh, which is a green oak leaf. But you could if you prefer red or crimson varieties. So you've got four potential lettuces there. If you only want two, I would do Black Seeded Simpson and the Marvel of Four Seasons. That gives you the base of your salad bowl all the way through the winter. You'll be picking those. And I, I know I keep going on about this, but it just amazes me that in the spring and summer, I can sow lettuce and we'll be harvesting for maybe six or eight weeks before they bolt. Whereas if I sow now, I'm picking from the same roots until next March or April, the same roots for five or six months. And that's why they're so much easier to grow now for picking. And you might say, but I don't want to eat lettuce in the winter but you're wrong. And nutritionally, we all know that eating raw and eating salad any time of year, you don't need to be in your bikini to eat salad. Um, it's, it's just incredibly tasty and it's how you put them together with strong flavors that make it more winter compatible rather than sort of Caesar salad compatible, if you see what I mean. So yeah, I certainly try and pick and eat a salad pretty much three, six, five days of the year. 
And those are the lettuces that I would recommend for the next six months of picking. So on now to a few things to scatter through them. Well, probably my absolute favorite, which would be number five, would be a salad rocket. And salad rocket is best sown between September and March or April. So now is the time to sow salad rockets because they bolt really quickly in the hot and dry, whereas they crop really consistently through the cold, gray, wet months of the year. And I tend to grow a variety called Serrata, but there are lots of others, any of the salad rockets. I pick that over the wild rocket because it gives you a more substantial leaf and it's cut and come again. And the more you crop, the more it returns. And wild rocket is also very good for this time of year, but it gives you a finer, you know, a sort of more bony leaf and it's more heat tolerant. So I tend to use that in the summer and autumn months, whereas I tend to use salad rocket in the winter and spring months. And then I would definitely go for a mustard. And my favorite probably of all the mustards is red frills, which tastes of new potatoes, completely hardy. So now I'll still be picking from that right the way through till next March. And you grow it in exactly the same way in a gutter as with all these things and pushing them out in exactly the same way. So not seed trays for these. Ideally not direct because you can get germination at twice the speed if you sow uh, with a little bit of protection. So ideally in a gutter, ideally protected somewhere, but for putting out imminently. Next one would be one of the Mitsunas. And I love both Red Giant, which is the crimson one, and the green leafed Mitsuna. I use them in salads. I use them in stir fries, just added right at the end. And I use them in soups. And so I think think, oh gosh, I've lost count. That takes us to seven or eight, I think. So next on the list would be a spinach. And for me, my favorite spinach for sowing at this time of year is the variety called Rubino. Now, Rubino is very elegant. It has wine red stems and veins through the leaf and green leaves. And it's very, very hardy. So of all the spinaches we've tried, we can actually keep this going right the way through the winter, outside as well as under glass. If we get a really cold snap like we did last December, if you remember, uh, we were certainly snowed in here for a whole week and we had to walk up the lane to go and get food. But a spinach rubino rubino survived, but we did put uh, it under some fleece over that very, very cold time. And if you've got, uh, you know, just a sheet of plastic or whatever, just put it over in the coldest snaps but otherwise it's it's the hardiest of all the varieties we've tried. And if you have a cold frame or a greenhouse, you also could add Madania, which gives you these huge, luscious, dark green leaves, but they're, they're really amazing, massive, very tender, very, very tasty. So that would be another option. And then for number nine, it would be for me a chard, And it's always a toss up with me between the Bright Lights chard, which is prettier with the multicolored rainbow stems or the white stem chard. And on balance, I tend to go for the white silver variety because it's more prolific. And I personally find the flavor slightly better. But if you're wanting it for salad, I would sow chard Bright Lights now. If you're wanting it as a leafy green for eating like with pasta sauce or with wilting with chickpeas or making a gratin, uh, I would go for the white silver variety. So it really depends what you're wanting to eat it for. But definitely if it's for salad and raw, then it's Bright Lights. If it's for cooking, it's white silver. And again, you'll have heard me say it many times before, those of you who listen regularly, remember to take the midrib out of the green And either you can feed the stems to the chickens or you can cook them separately, almost like you would celery, or you can chop it very finely, throw it into your pot of boiling water, but cook it for three minutes before you then put the leaf, the leafy section over the top, because the stems take a little bit more cooking than the greens. So my final, um, Well, no, sorry, I'm cheating because I've got to add in another number nine, which is I have to have a kale. It's late now, which is why it's a little addendum here and it's a little extra. It is late to be sowing any brassica now. But what we found is the dwarf green curled variety, which is an F1, 
actually by sowing in September, we still do get quite rapid germination and then we can pick it as a baby leaf. And I love kale in a salad. And obviously as a baby leaf, it's much more tender. It's a classic one wilted with a tahini dressing. But however you want to use it, I think it is still worth giving it a go, sowing it now. But I would ideally have sown that about four or five weeks ago. But, you know, I'm still certainly, it's it's in my fist to my fistful of seeds to take down to the polytunnel this weekend. The final three, so 10, 11 and 12 are all herbs. And obviously, I'm not going to be telling you to sow basil now. It's a half hardy, it's tender, it'll get frosted really immediately. In fact, it would probably not even germinate. Whereas flat leaf parsley, chervil and coriander are all hardy annuals or biennials and they'll all be perfectly happy whatever the weather throws at us really. Coriander, the least so. So coriander is the one that I would say I always try and sow it on the shoulders of the year. So I sow it in September and I sow it in March and it really loves it cold, grey and wet. So from a September sowing, it'll germinate quickly. I sow it into a gutter pipe, do it in exactly the same way as I've described. You can sow it into a seed tray if you want, but widely spaced. It's got big seed, of course you know, because we all use coriander seed a lot in pickles and things, and so you'll know how big the seeds are. But with that, it will then crop within six weeks. Uh, You can start picking baby leaf, and you can go on until you get your first really hard frost, sort of down to kind of, once you get down to minus three, minus five, it'll stop cropping. But you may find if you clush it, the roots will survive, and if we hit mild spot, it'll start leafing up again. But... 100% reliably hardy. Honestly, almost wherever you live in the British Isles, I would recommend Cherville and Parsley Giant of Napoli. Now, these both have survived with us going down to minus seven here some years. They might get knocked back a bit, but they'll leaf up as soon as you, you know, 10 days later or whatever, as soon as you get a bit of rain and a bit of mildness. And I would always, always sow Cherville in September it doesn't germinate in the hot and dry. It just doesn't like it. It sits dormant, whereas it loves it as soon as it gets cold, gray and wet. And it has a nice aniseedy flavor and it's best eaten raw. So I tend to add it to a salad just as it is or add it to an omelet as I take it out of the pan. Really lovely, gentle, slightly sort of grassy, aniseedy flavor. And finally, my absolute number one edible plant, have to finish it with it every time really that I talk about anything edible, is Parsley Giant of Napoli. We've grown and trialed and tested, I don't know, 10 different varieties of parsley in this garden over the last 30 years. But this, without doubt, is the stalwart number one. Completely hardy. We sow it in March and September, two sowings a year, and we never don't have it to pick. If you've got anywhere under cover, keep it there because it means you can pick it even over Christmas Day, whatever the weather, but it'll still survive outside. But, you know, if you have a cold frame or a pot on your doorstep or a window box on your window ledge, it's still worth growing parsley giant of Napoli. Soak it overnight so that you wash the germination inhibitor off the seed coat, dry it in a bit of paper towel, sow it the next day or later that day. And it is slower to germinate, so it won't germinate for maybe two to three weeks. You can plant it out, but it doesn't matter. However cold it is, you can still plant it out into the garden. So those are my top 12, but actually I cheated and uh, slotted in a few extras for sowing and growing now as um, we've had a lovely, mild and, and sort of sunny, warm September. Thanks so much for listening to my favourite things for autumn sowing for eating. Next week, I'm joined by our head gardener, Josie, and we're going to debate the pros and cons of amaryllis. I rather love amaryllis because they look fantastic at a lean time of year. Josie's not so sure. There are a few that she loves, but not all of them. So we will be debating amaryllis, what to do, which to grow and how to do it. So see you then. You can find more information, photos and advice sheets on all the plants and recipes we talk about on this podcast by heading to the show notes or at sarahraven.com forward slash podcast.